Okay, we've been talking about how to grow and uh, mature into a, a mature, productive Christian. And, of course, uh, prayer is very important, we discussed earlier. Now let's look at some scriptures that talk about studying the Bible. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. And 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 15, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Okay. So what I'm getting out of those verses is that um, if we study, once you get born again and, and uh, you're a child of God, uh, we're told to study. And it says that you will get wisdom from it, and you will be able to answer people's questions, and we should always be ready to answer questions. How can we answer questions from unbelievers um, and give them a reason why we believe unless we've studied? That's right. Let me, let me uh, give you an um, illustration of why the Bible is, is so important. Let's say that, uh, now you're married, Let's say your wife told you that she was going to go away for a long time, but she promised you she'd return. She had to take care of some business. And um, the months go by, and every week, though, she sent you a letter. It was a love letter. And after a long period of time, she came back, and you're happy to see her, but she looked at the kitchen table and saw a big pile of letters she sent you. Not one of the letters was ever opened. What you th how do you think your wife would react to that? Um, she probably would be upset. She took the time every week to write a love letter to you, and you never even cared enough to open the letter and read it. Yeah, it would make her I, sad. You know, I wouldn't blame her for being upset and sad. Um, and you see, some people have called the, the, the Bible the love letters from God. Uh, God has written these lessons for us, and the hist history for us. And uh, some people treat the Bible like it's just a trophy. They have a big fancy Bible, and they stick it on their bookshelf like a trophy, and it's just getting dust. They never open it and read it. So they're not only uh, not going to study and have answers that they need to have, uh, but I think it's an offense to God who, who wants us to read these love letters from Him. Exactly, and then sometimes I think what happens when someone does ask them a question about God, they really don't know the answer, so they just speak off the top of their head. And by doing that, they can take the chance of misrepresenting God. And God doesn't like to be misrepresented. Right. So we've established that a Christian needs to, number one, pray continually. We, two, study the Bible. And three, what's, what's the next thing a person, a Christian, needs to do in order to grow mature? Uh, you need to have fellowship. Let's go to Matthew 5, 14 and 15. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Okay. Ye, he's referring to us. So you have the Holy Spirit in you, and you're the light of the world. But he says, we're not supposed to put this light underneath a table <laughs> and hide it. It's supposed to go on top of the table so that the light can be seen. And that's telling you, Frank, and me, as Christians, that we need to be out in the world how is the world going to see the light if we, if we don't go out in the world? In the world, I'm talking about the world of unbelievers. Yeah. I know. Well, Jesus, he, he came to seek and save that which was lost. He went and he ate with sinners, and the religious leaders of Jesus' day would uh, uh, be all upset at him because he's eating with 
these people who they said were sinners. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, there's a a perfect example. He was criticized for it, but it was necessary. He said, uh, uh, "Someone who's healthy doesn't need a physician." You know, and in, in that same way, we as following his example, we need to go in the world so our light can shine. We can tell people about Jesus, but we have to guard against getting in the world. We've got to be in the world in order to testify and be a light, but we don't want to be of the world and participate in the sinful things that the world is doing. Right. Um, now, the let's go to that second verse, and it, it's going to put it, uh, this, these relationships in perspective here now. Romans 12.10. To another, the working of miracles. Oh, excuse me. Romans twelve ten. Yes. Be kindly affectionate one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. That's right. the The, the Bible is telling us that um, as fellow Christians, we should not neglect coming together with other Christians on a regular basis and we should actually prefer the company of other Christians. Now, I've been around some people I know and they, they tell me, can we talk about something else here? You think, All you ever want to talk about is Jesus. Well, I, you know, I don't want to try to push it on them if, if they're friends or family or something and they don't want to hear it. But So I'll respect that. But the truth is, <laughs> there's nothing I want to talk more about than Jesus. Every other subject seems trivial in comparison. So, by coming together with other Christians, we have that in common, and there's nothing better than spending your time with other people who love Jesus. Amen. And uh, so we're supposed to come together on, on a regular basis. The first um, century church was meeting in people's homes, small groups of people moving, meeting in people's homes, and in small groups, people actually develop relationships. Instead of, if you go to a, 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 a church meeting uh, and there's thousands of people, it's kind of impersonal. So if you can get in small groups, then you can pray together, worship together, have fellowship and develop relationships and minister to each other, serve each other. So it's a very important part of being a Christian is coming together on a regular basis and we should prefer to be around Christians rather than non-believers. We need to be around non-believers because we've got to keep in the light. Amen. All right. 